Welcome to this tutorial on the render settings and the compositor in Blender. So here we have an image that is rendered with just about the default settings in Blender for the cycles vendor. I always use cycles. Um, as we can see, it's a bit noisy. It's a bit flat. The lighting is a bit, um, well, it's not very interesting, not yet at least. So what we can do is set up the max bounces of the light that will make the image a, a little bit brighter. It, it's not going to do a lot to this image because there is actually enough light in it. But if you have a darker image, then this is definitely going to help uh, smoothen out the shadows and give it a bit more light where it, uh, it actually should have more light. Um, another thing we can do is the sampling. Default Blender uses 128 samples. I usually go for at least 500 when I'm doing a, um, a latex render. If I'm doing a fur render, then I usually use at least a thousand samples. Um, Cause that just erases a lot of the noise. So uh, if we go to slot two here, so we can actually compare and then we try to render this at the uh, new settings. So now the render is complete. And as we can quickly see, the noise has decreased a lot. If we try to switch between the two, then we can see that all of this noise is just completely gone. So that helped a lot. Though what you'll also see is that of course the render time has changed a lot from 36 seconds to two minutes and 19 seconds. So if you've worked on an image for, I don't know, five hours, 12 hours, a couple of days, then a couple of minutes of render time, doesn't really matter. You want a, uh, as pretty image as possible when you're doing your final render. So the next thing we can do is the compositor. This was actually all that had to do with the uh, render settings. It's, it's not that complicated really, but what we need to do is we need to go to the view layer properties, and then the passes. And what we want to add here is the denoising data. Cause there's still some noise in the image and we want to remove that. And we will use the denoiser to do that. So if we go to the compositor here, then we suddenly have the noisy image here. Let's see if it actually works. So we have to re-render. I think we have to re-render. And we will add the backdrop here. Yeah, we have to re-render. So let's do that. So two minutes and 24 seconds later, now we have the image in our backdrop in the compositor. So what we can do is we just slide this up and then let's have a look at this. Zoom in a little bit. Let me just add my screen keys. Where do I do that? Down here, no. No, I have to go out to the 3D viewport to do that. Let's see if they even work in the, in that one. Well, yeah, do they work down here at all? No, yeah, you can see them up here. Let's just back this down, there we go. So now I can see what I'm pressing. So we have our compositor here. We have the normal image and we have the noisy image. And it's pretty much the same. If you look at that, that are a lot of change. Though we also have a denoising normal and a denoising albedo. And we want to use those as well. That will give the denoiser more information on how to denoise the actual image. So if we add in a denoise node here, put here, put in the image. The noisy, no, not the noise image, the denoising normal and the albedo. And then we take a look at that. Then it's more or less the same because we already removed a lot of the noise. But you can see up here, for example, that it removes all of this noise and makes it nice and clear. And that we will maybe have needed a thousand or two thousand samples to achieve. But now we can just use this denoiser. That's amazing. So if we go here, let's see if we can add in a switch because we're going to use that later. 
then add this. Then we're going to look at that. Then we should be able to switch between the two easily. Yeah, we can do that. Awesome. So we'll put that down here. So we have the actual image that we have ran through the compositor and then the original image so that we can switch between them when we're working on the composite so we can see what we're actually changing see if it actually makes sense so the next thing we want to add is that we want the lighting to be a bit more interesting so what we can do is we can add in a glare node so we will add that here and we will set we can always see already see that it's changing out of the image we want to set to fog glow and then we want a mix of one right now and a threshold of 1.5 and the size of nine. So now we can see we're only getting all the highlights in the image. So all of the bright pieces of the image are shining through. If we took the thrust threshold down, then we would get even more. We want to keep it a little bit higher so we don't get too much information. And what we can do then is we can use a mix RGB node. We'll mix this with the original denoised image and we want to use a add what there we go and then one uh, it's a bit much so let's take it down to 0.1 maybe see and now we get this that's not really what we want so what we want to do is we want to change these two flip them there we go so let's see if we mute this one then we can actually start seeing the difference up here so it's just highlighting this a little bit and another thing you can do is that right now when we look at this it's very uh, it's just the original image that's just glared so what we want to do is actually we want to blur this a little bit to make it a little bit prettier we want to use fast gaussian and relative and one percent there we go there we go. Then we go to the add node again, and we put this in instead. And there we go. Then you can play with this blur if you want to blur it more or less, so, or whatever you want. So now we have this. Again, we can try to switch between the original image. If we also look at this, of course. There we go. So now we can see that there's actually beginning to come, come a, a big difference sh shining through here. Now it's starting to look like something. Anyway, so if we move this out a bit, then after this add node, we want a color balance. So we add that in. And since Blender is now using the um, color management filmic this should be set to offset instead of the lift it's not doing a lot of difference but at least uh, all the tutorials say that uh, you should set it to the offset the one thing that you want to uh, keep in mind is that this in the middle is inverted so if we take this and say oh we want it green then it actually turns purple so this is a little bit weird anyway but what I usually want to do is I want to make the image a little more red, red, so a little warmer than it usually is. So if we take this, set it to one, and then we want it to be more red. So we want the red one to actually be lower because it's inverted, right? So if we take it 0.95 maybe, then it just a little bit more red. And over here, this is not inverted. So here we want to add to the red. So let's try 1.2 here. Yeah, that made it a little bit uh, warmer to look at. So if we, again, mute this, then we can see the difference. So this is the original with the compositing, of course. And then with the color balance node, it just gets a little warmer. It gets a little, yeah, get that little bit more fuzzy feeling, right? <laughs> anyway, the next thing we want to do, which is actually the last thing that we want to do, is add a vignette. So we want to add an ellipse mask like this and the values that we want is we want width to be one 
and height, you'd say, hey, we also want one there. But no, we don't, because that will give you this. Then it will be one square, because it's not the image that it's using here. It's actually just the, uh, it's a one-to-one -one scale, right? So here we want a 0 0.566. That fits pretty well. Anyway, so we can look at this. This gives you this ellipse here. So what we want to do is actually we want to blur this because this is not going to give a very pretty ellipse, right? Or pretty uh, vignette. So we want to use fast Gaussian, we want to use relative, and then 25%. That gives you this. That's much prettier. So if you look at this one again, the color balance, or actually just we can use the switch node. We want this one. Then what we want to do is add a mix RGB again. And we want to set it to multiply. And then we just want to put this in. And then we get this. There's a bit more focus on the character now instead of all the corners. So if we, again, try to look at what was it before? What was it now? What is it now? Then we get this. It's a bit dark now, so we can of course set this down, just set 0.5 maybe. Then remove some of the blackness, so you can't actually see the vignette right now, but it is there and it's doing its job. It's only if we mute this, then we can see that it's totally the same brightness in all the co corners. And then with this, it sort of darkens it, gives more focus to the character that you're actually looking at. and with that we're actually done so now we can look at this switch here see the original image it's like this and then with the compositing it looks like this and in my opinion it's a lot prettier right i mean and of course in the compositor you can do all sorts of weird stuff also remember that this is just a viewer you want to put this into the composite as well so if we go up to the image editor here then you can see it's, it's still just showing the old image so if we want to save this this version we have to put it into the compositor here if we don't do that then we're just going to save the old one so there we go and now we can go to image and save save as save whatever but if you don't do it then yeah it doesn't it's not going to work but also in the compositor um you can also put in a filter node which will soften the image right now that's usually because the 3d render is just like a perfectly still render of what you have and if you soften it a bit then you get a little bit more realistic uh render because if you're if you have a pose then in real life you're gonna have small movements all over the place and it's not gonna get a hundred percent sharp the image also the camera is not going to be a hundred percent still so this just helps give that just a little bit softness to the image a little bit it blurs a tiny bit i don't know if, i don't even know if we can see it if we uh take this and then we mute it yeah you can see it it's a little bit you can see here that it has these hard edges it's really it's really crisp and sharp and then with this, it just blurs it a little bit. You can also, I usually use a 0.5 value here. And that'll give this. So it's not a lot, but it's just a little. It's uh, it's just like a, um, a Ferrari, not a Ferrari as such, but as uh, in the car races, right? You have all these little things that they do to the car to get it to have a little more, bit more downforce. If you take one piece away, doesn't really matter. If you take two pieces away, doesn't really matter but if you take all the pieces away that you've enhanced or optimized then it's gonna make a big difference right and it's the same here if we just take one piece out then I mean, it's, it's still gonna be okay right but if you take all the pieces out then it's suddenly just gonna be this flat image so you want to build up a big node tree or it doesn't need to be a big node tree but you want to build up so that you have as much adding to your image as possible, right? To make it as pretty as possible. Um, and I guess that's it. Again, if you want more tutorials or want to know something else about Blender, you can always just reach out to me. Um, my 
what's it called telegram account is somewhere on for affinity and i think also on twitter and stuff uh, else just send me a note somewhere um or comment to this video and then uh, let's have a look at it